Hello there and welcome to this unprecedented academic session. I hope that you've been able to structure your lives and your regard for this distance education model successfully and that we're able to begin this term in a positive and constructive frame of mind. My name is Chris McDonald and I'll be leading a vertical study of this coming fall term, entitled Entirely Unprecedented Yet Utterly Familiar. This is an apparently contradictory pairing of aspirations, but one which I believe can be at once provocative and enticing. I've been teaching here at UBC for just over 20 years, and have previously taught at various schools, including SIAC, the University of Texas, and the Architectural Association School, where I was educated. Um, my early projects, in partnership with Peter Salter, have been published and exhibited widely, and my research interests during my time in Vancouver have emphasized the emergence of a local, quote, modern vernacular and the design of housing as it pertains to urban structure. The studio will be structured similarly to a number of vertical studios I've led recently, collaborating with prominent practitioners. In the past, these have included Stantec, designing the new St. Paul's Hospital, Cannon Group, designing a resource settlement in northern BC, and Gare Williamson Architects, designing dense rental housing in central Vancouver. In each case, my role is to establish an essential and overarching thematic inquiry that frames the preoccupations of practice as well as uh, curating the regard between the two partners. The projects are typically at a scale of schematic design during the design session so that your inquiries are measured directly against the work and ongoing design progress of our collaborators. Uh, they will be, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, <coughs> they will be giving uh, on, ongoing uh, criticism and commentary to your work. Uh, as well as uh, <coughs> giving a sense of their own uh, aspirations. Um, so the group that we're going to be working with is called the LeMay Group. Um, they're the largest privately held architectural firm in the country. Uh, this is one of the major hospitals in Montreal that um, is done under their practice. And in particular, we're working with a group, a smaller group within that large corporation, um, which is called the LeMay Lab. Uh, there's the design director, Andrew King, and his associate, Marie Elmore, will be working with us. Uh, they'll contribute to our critical discussion and also in, offer interesting insight into very practice modes, not just theoretical structures, but operational modes that they inhabit every day. Because of the generous scale of the projects and an effort to become more familiar with the practice of working in teams, <clears throat> we will undertake uh, a, a small two-week design study to begin the term based on the program of the first house designed by Arthur Erickson. The house constructed in 1953 for the painter Gordon Marion and his wife Marion. This short introductory project will as well give time for everyone to settle into your Miro environment and establish as seamless as possible our modes of communication. As noted earlier, my task is also to provide a conceptual context in which we can consider the projects allied to our academic situation and hopefully expanding upon the often prosaic, however well-intentioned, inclinations of practical design concerns. My proposal, as noted in the earlier broad sheet, hinges very directly on concerns for architectural expression and interpretation. As a first historical reminder of this topic, we will be reading and discussing the text Against Interpretation from 1966 by Susan Sontag. The other two key texts that we'll be referring to are Non-Referential Architecture by Valerio Olagati and Marcus Bridgschmidt, and The Classical Vernacular um, by Roger Scruton. In a sense, the two polemics are aggressively contradictory, um, but I would propose that ultimately the reading of the text might bring us closer to an understanding of how theory and contemporary architectural discourse operates and actually draws towards some kind of visualization of how that role usefully impinges upon practice. And finally, in order to offer some sense of the design direction in which this discussion might lead, now we refer to the text of Adam Caruso in which he describes the Caruso Sinjin project for the new art gallery of Walsall of 2000, somewhere to start. The coordination with practice and the collaborative work in small teams has proven stimulating and extremely productive in the past. I look forward to the term and, of course, to answering any questions regarding content or clarification in our next session together. Thank you.